Hi there, welcome back. It's Saturday and it's the weekend. Uh, sorry I'm a few minutes late. I decided at the last minute, of course, about 45 seconds before uh, 6 p.m. that I was going to um, try putting the camera on my tripod again using this funny wire thing and attaching it and then it was slipping and I put a spatula, a silicone spoon underneath it to balance it so it wouldn't slip. And then right before I was about to go live, it just went sort of horizontal or I'd say diagonal. So uh, that didn't work. So now I'm back to using um, two recipe files from the 1960s that are hot pink, a box of couscous, and I've upgraded and I put a box of peppermint bark from Trader Joe's on top of that. And here we are. So I hope you can see me. <laughs> <laughs> After all of that, I, I saw Stanley Tucci's video, finally, of him making a Negroni, and I thought I needed to upgrade my game because he got so much traffic and so much interest, and all these websites were writing about him, and I thought, well, I, I, want, I need some of that action. So I thought I'd get the camera in a better position. Um, I found a black t-shirt, um, but I'm not Stanley Tucci, sorry. <laughs> so. Um, however, um, a friend of mine works for a very big website and he told me that the way to get a lot of traffic is to do inauthentic recipes. So uh, Stanley Tucci shook his Negroni and he also, I think, used vodka in it, which um, I'm not going to do that today. That's not today's cocktail. I'm, I'm keeping it French today. Um, I hope you enjoyed yesterday. I loved having Tim Master here. He's just a great guy. I mean, I didn't want to stop talking to him. Um, and then my sort of dream is to go to the distillery with him someday and spend the weekend there. It's a great place. One of the, one of my readers or one of our readers, since we're all together, told me, she goes, I was going to go, but it's closed till 2021. Um, so they're, they've closed the visitor center, but, um, so you, you can't go right now. Anyhow, the next best thing was having Tim here. Uh, and that was great to have him. On. Um, just before I get going here, also I want to let you know that tomorrow is Sunday and usually that's the day I don't do a video here. However, my friend Susan Spungen, or Spungen, I'll have to ask her how to pronounce her name correctly, um, and she's on Instagram at Susan Spungen, uh, S-P-U-N-G-E-N. -E um, she has a new book out called Open Kitchen and I loved the book. I saw a preview of it a few months ago and we're going to do a recipe swap on her Instagram. So check that out tomorrow at 6 p.m. Paris time, the same time I'm doing this, but it's gonna be on her Instagram at Susan Spungen. I'm just gonna scroll up here, hoping that nothing, I don't knock over my camera. Hello, SJ Lawler, bonjour, and bon weekend, uh, Bad King Griffiths, thank you. Oh, hello in Louisville, Kentucky. I know how to say that, because I used to live, I had a, a roommate in, uh, a dorm mate in college. I'm not Stanley Tucci. His camera didn't fall. Um, anyway, I learned how to say Louisville from a, a dorm mate of mine in college, and she, she said, it's like, pretend you have a mouthful of marble. So Louisville. Um, and hello in London, how are you? Uh, so today's cocktail, it's inspired. I was gonna do something else, and then Tim yesterday mentioned the Bijou cocktail. Uh, and it's a cocktail that I enjoy uh, quite a bit as well. It was funny having him talk about it. Um, I thought, you know, I'm going to make that today because I have chartreuse, I've got everything out, and it uses, uh, I was thinking there's no spirit more French than chartreuse. So somebody just wrote to me, I posted this recipe, it's called the Bijou, which means jewel or gem in French. Uh, I posted this recipe on the blog just about an hour ago so that you guys have it. Uh, and somebody said, well, I have some green chartreuse elixir, which we talked about a little yesterday. It comes in these little bottles and it's, it's a variation on what chartreuse originally was. It was a medicinal elixir back in the days. It's no longer medicine anymore. It's not considered medicinal and they make no claim, no medical claims on this, but it comes, still come in these little tiny bottles. It's very strong. It's very concentrated and it's, it used to be higher proof. Now it's 69 proof. Uh, generally, she asked me if she could substitute it for regular chartreuse, and if she's watching, hi, thank you for leaving the comment. Uh, no, you maybe be able to dilute it with some water, um, but I don't know how to, uh, you'd have to sort of futz around with that. But you could try it, why not? You've got it. Most liquors are actually diluted before you buy them. When I went to visit my friend Matt, 
who was on a few weeks ago, the traveling distiller, he gave me some eau de vie right from the still. And it was like 80, it was like 80% alcohol. You know, it was very strong and they dilute it and they bring it down to a certain point. So you can try that if you'd like. I'm gonna try swiping up again if the phone falls. Oh, hi Paula. I'm happy to be here alive too. Yes, Miss TJ. <laughs> Uh, my Roman's not here right now, but um, he went into Trader Joe's and he was like, why don't we have this in Paris? <laughs> so whenever we go back to the U.S., we, um, we go to Trader Joe's and I stock up on things like hazelnuts and stuff and dried fruits. Um, but I did have dinner with Stanley Tucci one, one night and because uh, a friend of mine, um, actually, <laughs> I went on this yoga retreat once in um, Costa Rica many, many years ago, and I met a, a woman there. It was great. And she's a film producer, and she introduced me to him later. And, um, but it was funny because on this yoga retreat, um, it was in Costa Rica. We're in the mountains and having a good time and eating vegan food. And one day we were all like, you know, I really want some tacos. I, I want some meat. So a few of us went rogue. And we went down to the village or the town to get some Mexican food and we ordered all these uh, Mexican food, uh, Central, even though Costa Rica is not Mexico. We had, they had things like tacos and stuff and we were eating. Well, it was like, this meat tastes weird. And we looked at the menu and it was actually fake meat. It was a vegan restaurant. <laughs> so it was meant to be. And we were also with a woman who was a female body or a power builder. And she was on that show, American Gladiators. And we corresponded, um, a while and she was kind of cool. Uh, it was kind of fun meeting people like that. And that's the good thing about getting out there and doing stuff you wouldn't normally do. You get to meet all these interesting people like Tim and I get to meet you guys. So today's cocktail is called the Bijou. It's actually the name is wrong. Uh, another way to get traffic on your website is to misspell things or um, do things that aren't culturally correct. So it actually, the name refers to Bijou and the colors of the, of the different spirits correspond with different, different gems. So chartreuse corresponds with emeralds, red vermouth corresponds with rubies, and clear gin corresponds to diamonds. So it theoretically should be called bijou with an X on the end, which is plural. So um, I'm not gonna say anything because the author, the recipe is from 1890, and it was first published in 1900 by a fellow named Harry Johnson, who wrote a book called The New and Improved Cocktail Manual. It was published in 1900. And you can see Chartreuse was, is that old. It's hundreds of years old. Um, you know, it's, actually, it's actually almost 400 years old. And the recipe was updated, I believe it was in the 60s or 70s, or I think I wrote it down the year, but it was by um, this fellow named Dale DeGroff, who's a very well-known uh, bartender, cocktail expert, and writer, and he's written books about, he's sort of the expert, one of the experts on cocktails. And he refashioned it, because it wasn't quite, it used to be equal parts uh, gin, uh, chartreuse, and vermouth, and he re refashioned it. I made one today, and I thought, you know, it needs a little more vermouth, so I kind of um, re-triggered it. And, you know, like any recipe, you can change it. People often ask me, they're like, I want to make your chocolate chip cookies. I don't like walnuts. Can I use cashews? I'm like, yeah, why not? They're the same, you know, basically the same thing. Or they want to make brownies. And they don't want to put nuts in there. I'm like, go to town. You're in your own kitchen. Um, so I do have a tripod coming. Um, I ordered it from online here. And I, as soon as I clicked the buy button, they said coming from China. So it might take a while. Um, but it does look funny because I have all these counters above me and it's all this empty space. So <laughs> I'll try to stand closer. And I also, I was so excited because I found this in my, when I was cleaning my refrigerator today, um, I put it on Instagram because I don't know why. Somebody told me to, uh, so I did. Um, see, I'm a people pleaser. Um, it's the yeast, it's this professional yeast and I haven't opened it yet. And people often ask me, they go, when you make bread, when you make a baguette, and we make sourdough, it's like nobody in Paris makes their own bread. I mean, there's probably people that do. That, you know, someone's like, there's, I have a friend that makes bread. But people, people go to the bakeries and buy bread. So that's what I do, because they do it really well. And a baguette is like a euro or a euro 50, which is about a dollar or a dollar 50. Um, I actually once said uh, on one of my blog posts that uh, people in France don't eat with their hands. The only thing they eat with their hands generally is asparagus, um, 
which I'm having for dinner tonight with pesto. That was in my freezer. That's the beauty of cleaning out your refrigerator and freezer. And then somebody wrote to me and they said, well, we were in, Prov we were in Provence or in Nice and somebody was eating a sandwich with their hands. So I stand corrected. <laughs> Anyhow, I brought my little table so you could see what I'm doing again. The only problem is I can't see what I'm doing. So if I drop anything, you can write about it on Huffington Post, like Stanley Tucci. <laughs> He's probably gonna write to me and go, stop using my name, <laughs> sue me. Uh, one thing, I, it was interesting, I was going through my liquor shelves and I dropped this bottle of gin. This is from my friend Matt. He was here the other day to traveling distiller and the top fell off and I was like, oh shoot, because it's wax sealed um, and you can see it cracked. Um, but the gin, I lost about a quarter of the bottle of the gin and I put a cork in it. Um, and then I had the other day Alexander Gabriel or Alexandre and he's a master distiller and I had a bottle of cognac that went bad and he saw it he goes well because you, you put a wine cork in it and you introduce different bacteria so I don't have any other corks so I'm gonna have to drink this pretty fast so I'm gonna use this today in the bijou or uh, we should say even if it's plural in French you have I this took me a while to learn when I was going to French school I said, well, you don't pronounce the last third of most words in French. So the plural of bijou is, pr is pronounced the same way as singular, bijou, bijou. And the only way you know the difference is if you say le or le. Um, so you have to say le, which means the plural or le bijou. And sometimes it's feminine, um, but whenever you're speaking in plural, you always use le or L-E-S anyway. Got that? Okay. In Italian, it's uh, li, and it's spelled G-L-I, and I was trying to speak Italian there, and I was going gli, gli, and they were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so the Bijou is a pretty simple drink. It's one and a half ounces of gin, and I'm using French gin. We want to keep it French. Whoops, you can't see what I'm doing still. I am going to try to. I'm gonna get this right yet. Okay, I'll hold it up. Hi, Brad Parsons. Thanks to Brad is like, here's the tripod I got, but it was only available in the US, so. All right, so I got one and a half ounces of gin in my cocktail mixing glass. It's because this drink doesn't have any fruit juice in it, I'm not gonna shake it. You could shake it if you want. Um, you could probably get more internet traffic if you do that. But you're in your own kitchen. If you wanna shake it, if you like them emulsified. People were going nuts because Stanley, because uh, somebody on the internet recently shook a Negroni. You know, it's probably not the end of the world. Um, I put a Negroni mixture in my ice cream machine once and it came out really good. It was like a frozen Negroni and that's not the way to make a Negroni, but it was really good, so. Okay, anyhow, next thing is chartreuse, three quarters of an ounce of chartreuse. And one of the good things about having a friend who was on about chartreuse <laughs> is that he sent me another bottle yesterday. So full disclosure, he sent this to me because um, I said, I wanna have you on the show and I'm almost out. So I have a new bottle of chartreuse. So three quarters of an ounce of chartreuse. There really isn't any substitute for this, unfortunately. People ask me about that. Um, what can I use instead? You could do something like Ginepi, which is not the same. Um, it's kind of like asking someone if they can substitute carob for chocolate. Um, it's, you could, it's not the same thing. And if you might not know what carob is unless you are sort of a child of the 70s and 80s. Um, so three quarters of an ounce of green chartreuse. And then lastly, one ounce of French red sweet vermouth. And you could use Italian, but we're in France. And you could also use three quarters of an ounce which is the recipe that uh, Del de Groff came up with. I'm going rogue. Hello in Seattle and Chicago as well. I might try scrolling up again um, if it falls down. Hi in Berkeley and hello in Boston. Yes, well, I'll try to get um, Mr. Tucci on, but I don't think, um, actually, I do have a funny other story about him. I, can I tell it? Okay. Well, let me put the mixtures in here first. Um, it's one ounce of red vermouth. 
This recipe, once again, is on my blog. So another funny Stanley Tucci story. <laughs> That's it. I said I wouldn't talk about him, so you can leave uh, comments to say stop, stop with the Stanley Tucci. But when the Julie Julia Project movie, is that what it was called, uh, came out, they actually had a showing in Paris because the crew was on their way to Cannes. And I didn't know this, but I arrived at the embassy and I was waiting outside for Romain, the American embassy. And this limousine pulled up and Meryl Streep got out and I was like, <gasps> Bell Streep and then all the stars got out came out and they were all getting out and going into the embassy and they were being herded by security and I had had uh, dinner with Mr. Tucci a few uh, maybe maybe it was a few months before so I just thought well I'll say hello because we spent like three hours together and we drank wine and so forth and I kind of went over to talk to him and security came over and held me back and they go please step away from them. So I didn't get to say hello ever again so I think he's probably he probably told them in advance like keep that guy away from me. So I forgot to get ice, um, but I'm gonna get some right now. Yes, ice. All right, so I'm gonna fill the mixing glass about two thirds full of ice. Ah, also, ah, I shouldn't have done that yet. There's something else I was going to tell you about. One is you can use orange bitters if you want. Well, I will, anyway. You could add some orange bitters right now, which adds sort of a orangey note, I guess you're <laughs> totally like, why am I watching this guy's telling me adding orange makes things taste orangey? Well, it does add orangey notes, but it's also got alcohol in it and other spices and so forth. So it sort of seasons the drink. Um, and this is orange bitters and it's very inexpensive. It's like $12. Um, you should get a bottle of this. You can make it. It's a recipe on my blog for it as well. Another thing you can do is called an absinthe wash. And I'm going to mix the drink and then show you how to do that. And you're going to, um, some of you might not be pleased, but with what, I, with what I'm going to show you. About All right. So I'm going to give this a big stir. Hello in Manila. I like Manila because it rhymes with vanilla. <laughs> All right, so you want to get it really cold and it takes about 15 seconds or so. If, if it's a really strong drink, you can sort of let it sit for a moment in the glass to dilute. Uh, so an absinthe wash, this is absinthe. This is one type of absinthe. This used to be fake absinthe. It was called absinthe and they weren't allowed to call it absinthe because it didn't have wormwood in it, which, is, which was illegal. And then the laws changed, so now they call it absinthe. Um, I'm gonna do an absinthe wash in the glass. And the way to do an absinthe wash is just to pour a little in the glass. Very little, this is probably half a teaspoon. Um, you can see the color is nice, half a teaspoon. Okay, close your eyes, then you dump it. You shake it out. And that's called an absinthe wash. You could save it for something. Um, I know I shouldn't be throwing things away now, but I have a lot of absinthe. People were always giving me bottles and um, there's only so much absinthe you can drink. All right. So there you go, that's the Bijou cocktail. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a lemon twist to this. Oops, that's not a good one. So you can squeeze it over the top of the drink, like uh, yesterday Tim did that, which shoots the juice over the top, or the oils, I should say, the, the flavorful oils on the outside. And Margot, uh, who was on the last week or two weeks ago from Combat Bar, she goes like, she does this with the glat, with the, um, with the uh, twist because she said it sort of helps the experience, your skin makes that citrus come alive and it sort of warms up and you do smell it. So it's part of the experience. Mmm, that's a good one. I like this cocktail because it's strong, um, but it's, it's well-rounded. There's other liquors and like, that's the good thing about chartreuse is it adds this, it's a strong flavor, but you don't need to have a lot of it in there. 
um, you know, a th less than a third of this drink is chartreuse and yet it still comes forward. The gin is a nice neutral base for this. Uh, the vermouth adds smoothness and so forth. If you don't have gin, you could probably try this with vodka. But then you'd have to call it the Vijou or something else. Mmm, that's a good drink. So that's called the Bijou. Hello in Mexico. Ah, Susanna Trilling. Hi. <laughs> when I was cleaning my refrigerator, I found some smoked mole paste that Susanna brought me when she came and cooked in Paris. And she came with her son and they just cooked. They said, we want to make dinner for you. I was like, why not? <laughs> so, you know, Mexican food. So they made tortillas and we had, um, Roman had his first grasshoppers because she brought grasshoppers um, with her. Uh, for to sprinkle over the guacamole and Roman's great because he'll eat anything. He likes spicy food um, a lot of my friends who have French partners. They're like you're so lucky Roman will eat like spicy food and things that are highly seasoned. So I'm very happy that he um, Likes all those things. He's very open. Hello in Manhattan. Oh, you got the book. Thank you I'm glad you like I hope you like it Dilute with distilled water. Yeah, somebody's mentioning if you want to Oops. If you want to try using this, um, the elixir, you could try, oh, Stanley used Plymouth Gin. Okay, I stand corrected. See, I should have watched it better. Um, I'm not really good at watching stuff for a long, I have a low attention span, as you can probably tell. Um, so try mixing some distilled water with this. It's funny, whenever I make anything with gin, people say, um, People say, oh, you have to buy Plymouth Gin. <laughs> Everyone's like, well, they must put something in Plymouth Gin, um, which makes people want to talk about it. Um, people are really into their gins. Um, it's kind of interesting because I'm not that uh, fidel, I guess you say, lawyer. I like what I like. Like, you know, I have different kind of gins. It's kind of fun tasting different ones. Mm. The Bijou is a good drink. So if you have some chartreuse, if you tried it, uh, if you bought a bottle, you sprung for a bottle because it's not inexpensive, try this cocktail. You'll like it. If you like sort of moody cocktails, brown. Um, I was joking with uh, cocktail writer Robert Simonson who's written a couple of wonderful cocktail books. I said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write a book called Brown Drinks, comma, up because I tend to love brown drinks that are up like Toronto's and Manhattan's and perfect Manhattan's and black Manhattan's. Um, and this fits that bill. And he goes, that's a good idea. I was like, go ahead, you, you'll write the book. You'll do it, you're a spirits writer. I'm just a guy that likes to have a drink once in a while. Mm. Well, very good. And the absinthe does change it. It brings out the, um, the anise notes of the chartreuse a little bit, but not too much. Um, when I, I wrote recently on my blog, a lot of people were asking me, what liquor should I buy? And they started asking me before the book came out, and I kind of felt a little funny because I didn't want to, you know, it's, 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 you know, I say, well, you have to buy this gin and you have to buy this whiskey and, you know, people, you know, everyone has a budget and what I can afford or what I think people should buy or whatever is not, doesn't necessarily correspond to everybody. So I didn't want to just say, here, you need to spend $300. So I put together a list of things on my blog and I think I posted it yesterday um, about liquors that you know, the basics that you would need to, you know, just to mix a bunch of, several drinks, I should say. Um, and then there's a few extras thrown in there. And if several people are like, you didn't mention pastis. Um, well, to me, it's not super essential and I don't really use it in cocktails that much. So it's like saying, buy a bottle um, of absinthe because you really need it. Um, there's, there is a recipe in my book for a stinger, which is an old drink that make, it's makes, it's cognac and creme de menthe. And you don't think it would work, but it's amazing. It's another brown drink, comma, up. And that was given to me by William, who runs the bar program at Maison Premier in New York. And it has like a tiny amount of absinthe. I said, well, I hate to tell people to buy a bottle of absinthe to make this drink. And it, it just brings it alive. So you know, if you want to spring for a bottle, you can. Otherwise, you can, you can make different drinks. Uh, speaking of absinthe, I was kind of not going to have... Uh, the same people come back on this live program, but I love Margot from Combat so much, and she's been crushing it, as they say in French, on her Instagram, in her Instagram stories, doing cocktails. 
and she has a beautiful aesthetic and a beautiful, um, I just love watching her work and mix drinks and shake things and um, I'm I sort of just entranced by her. So I said, will you come back next week and do another cocktail? So she's gonna come back on Tuesday and she's gonna make a cocktail with absinthe in it. So we'll talk a little more about absinthe then, um, but she's super lovely. The rest of you will be in metrics because she's French, so you'll have to get out your little uh, Google. Um, who was that candidate that said, you check on the Google, so you can do the conversion on Google, but it's gonna be an absinthe-based drink. I thought it'd be fun to have something like that as well. And I'm trying to get a friend on who's a wine distributor, who's a great guy, we used to work together. Um, everybody thinks we were brothers because we, we're, we act like brothers. And when Roman saw us together this summer, he was just a gape at, he's like, you guys are like brothers. So I'm trying to get him on too, so we can talk about wine. Um, he'll demystify stuff. Uh, we'll have sort of a basic discussion about it. You could ask him anything. So that's gonna be next week, hopefully, if he says yes. yes. Michael, if you're watching, answer my email. And tomorrow, at the same time, I'm gonna be on Susan Spungen's, or Spungen, uh, her Instagram live at 6 o'clock p.m., same time as this one, um, doing a recipe from her book, and I'm not going to mention the title, but it rhymes with cassoulet. So I'm going to be doing some... Oh, oh no, how do I turn this thing back? Oh, uh, okay, anyway, whoops, I, I spilled the beans on cassoulet. Wait, 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 bad joke. Okay, anyway, I guess I should stop now. Um, that's it for today. This is, so we've got the Bijou cocktail. Once again, the recipe is on my blog. It's gin, which is a diamond, chartreuse, which is an emerald, and dolan, which is ruby red. I'm going to take one more sip. Mm. Good cocktail. All right. Well, thanks again. Oh, glad you, were en you enjoyed the uh, yesterday. Many people did. Um, and you enjoyed the Alaska cocktail. Yes. Great. And Boston, too. Yes, a great duo, me and Susan. Ah, Matt, hi. Thanks for the gin. I, I, lo I lost about a, ha a third of it on my carpet, but it's okay. I've got, I've got enough to get me through the uh, confinement. So until, uh, what is it, May? Stanley Tucci had someone else holding his camera. Hey, that's no fair. Okay, he wins. <laughs> so May 11th, we're supposed to be out of confinement here. So that will be very interesting to see. So May 12th, you might not see me anymore because I'll be outside, but um, I, <clears throat> I have a feeling you're not getting rid of me that easily. Okay, anyway, <laughs> have a good weekend wherever you are. I know you're all over the place in Manila and Boston and Chicago and in Burgundy and Fort Myers, Florida too. Uh, so have a great weekend. It was great to see you. And thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your comments on my blog, on my posts, um, but I actually just appreciate you coming and watching. So uh, thanks, and I will see you next week on Monday or tomorrow on Susan's uh, Instagram. Bye-bye.